Now the case for indeterminate difference is if you have a difference of two functions. And again, some cases are obvious. Constant minus infinity is negative infinity. Infinity minus constant is infinity. Infinity minus zero is infinity. Zero minus infinity is negative infinity. These are all direct. But the only case that is problematic or that is indeterminate is a large number minus another large number, infinity minus infinity. So the question is, well, which, which of these numbers are larger, even though they're both going to infinity? Again, the same trick is to convert it to zero by zero, infinity by infinity. And the tools we have are using common denominator, rationalizing, or factoring. Here's an example. Secant x minus tan x. Verify that this is indeed infinity minus infinity form. Now, I want to write this as fraction, so I recall by the definition of trigonometric ratios that secant is 1 over cosine and tangent is sine over cosine. And then I can rewrite this as 1 over cosine minus sine over cosine. And suddenly I have a 1 minus sine x over cosine x, which is 0 over 0, which means I can take the derivative. It's a L'Hopital's rule, and it ends up becoming 0. Next example, I see that it's algebraic terms. There's a square root and a square inside, and that gives us the motivation to rationalize it. Rationalizing is the process of multiplying, dividing by the conjugate, where conjugate is the same term, but with a plus instead of a minus. And it, it doesn't change the function because that's just one. I'm multiplying by one, which ends up becoming x over x squared plus x plus x, which is infinity over infinity, and I can apply the L'Hopital's rule. Now the derivative here is kind of ugly, but you can work through it to get the answer to be one half. Um, and the last scenario is called indeterminate powers. Consider the limit of this form. All the cases such as zero to the power zero, infinity to the power zero, one to the power infinity are called indeterminate. The trick is to convert them into product because we just learned how to do the product and we know how to convert products into zero by zero or infinity by infinity and apply L'Hopital. The only way to convert exponents into product is by using logarithms, which we learned last week. So we let a function affect to the power gx, then log of the limit is limit x going to a gx log of fx. Example, x to the power x. It's a zero to the power zero type. Take the log, I get x ln x, right? We've already looked at x ln x. So we change one over x, it becomes infinity by infinity. The limit comes out to be zero. But remember, this is not the final answer because that's the log of the limit. So the limit is one. Okay, so don't forget the log part. Some more examples. Um, here's a problem, find the limit. You can attempt, pause the video and attempt it. Now, the terms are going to one, right? We know this from our rational function thing. So it's a going to one to going to infinity type. We take the log. Um, so, so I thought we could do this, but that's kind of wrong. Actually, you can just go ahead and it's a product of, it's an indeterminate product. So you can rewrite the two over two x plus one as one over two x plus one and take derivatives. You take derivatives and you look at it carefully, you end up with a rational function kind of situation where the limit becomes one and you get a negative eight. So the log of the limit is negative eight, which means the limit itself is e to the power negative eight. The last topic is Cauchy's mean value theorem. Now recall the ordinary mean value theorem you saw in Calc 1. So if you have a continuous differential function on an interval, then there is some number c for which the derivative equals the slope of the card. Here's the intuition. Take any function, draw the card. If you move the card upward, it has to become this red line at some point, right? The slopes are equal because they are parallel. At some point, it's going to touch the curve at only one point, and that point is c. The Cauchy version says that if you take two functions, f and g, continuous on AB and differentiable on open AB, then there is a C such that the ratio of the derivatives at C becomes the ratio of the differences of the function between those points A and B. 
Um, you can read from the book, there is a section where they use this result to prove the L'Hopital's rule, and um, that's where it is really useful. And you have these worksheet problems. Um, number four is an extension of an example from the class, which is you saw this limit is infinity, then you found a bunch of other limits. Question is, what can you say in general about e to the x over x to the n? Yeah. And then what about e to the x divided by any polynomial of degree n? Question five gives you a definition of another definition of the number e based on um, growth or continuous compounding, which is used by banks. Six is interesting. Um, this is um, a function where try and apply the L'Hopital's rule and then see what happens. And the question is, can you find another strategy to solve this problem? Seven is similar to four. You have to show that this limit is zero for p greater than zero. And then combining your result from four and seven, um, what can you say about e to the x, ln x, x to the n, and how fast they grow as x goes to infinity? Um, problem nine is challenging. Um, it's asking you to, it's giving you the limit and asking you to find a and b so that the statement is true. So in some form you have, it's like applying the L'Hopital's rule in reverse. That's the only hint I can give. You recall the definition of tan hyperbolic X? Um, question is, what is the limit as X goes to zero of, of tan HX? What happens if the L'Hopital's rule is followed? Um, actually, correction here. Um, Okay, anyways, I'm gonna correct this question. I don't think it is correct in the current form. And lastly, there's a bonus problem. Consider the sequence, square root of one, square root of one plus square root of one, so on and so forth, n times. Let's evaluate the first few terms. It's one, root two, root of one plus root two, etc. Now, if you let x equals this process continuing n times, what is the limit as n goes to infinity? Namely, if x is this particular term going to infinity, what is x? Here is a hint. Can you find a copy of x hidden inside the definition of x? Uh, that's it for this week. Good luck with the worksheet.